Uh, Darth L. Karat, she says, Rackets, you literally do that with ISOM. Um, I don't think you'll find me doing me doing it that much. Uh, which, uh, look, I, I, again, I want Eric July to make a billion dollars. Um, and, and that's great. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm, um, candidly, uh, I'm, I'm very, very frustrated. Very frustrated with, um, how things are unfolding in the comics community. Um, How do I word this? I always want everyone to succeed in their business projects. I really do. I really, really do. I love independent creators and creation. I love the communities they build. I love the money they raise. I love that they engage their fans and love them. I love that. I think it's the greatest thing. I think it is our best antidote to the poison of big companies controlling our entertainment. I really hate when we act the same. Um, I really hate when we are immune from criticism, from critique, from scrutiny. I don't ever, ever want to be put on a supporter versus detractor list i will never kiss a fucking ring in my life for anybody at all and my friends would never ask me to because they know that i will not do it i will support concepts i will support products i will support people look i will support people in the face of quality and i will support people in the abundance of quality because I don't think we need to pretend that every independent project is a fucking Monet or a fucking Da Vinci because why would they be? Why would this happen? Why would they be perfect? They're not. And that's fine because good people who love their communities deserve support. Eric July is a good dude who loves his fucking community unabashedly. He's not mean to his customers. He is not rude. He says, hey, thank you. Uh, thanks for supporting me. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, thanks for buying this book and making this dream real. I love that. And I will support that 100,000 days out of 10. But if you ask me to kiss a fucking ring, I will not. And if you ask me, to accept evidence against a quote unquote detractor when that evidence is woefully deficient, I won't. I never will. And so many people have told me that other people I associate with have quote unquote tried to destroy a person's business. And I'm sorry. I've seen the presented evidence, and that isn't true. Criticism, critique, and mockery is not trying to destroy someone's business. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to like it. You can say, hey, those guys are faggots. They're wrong, whatever. I'll agree with you. But that is not life destruction. That is not business destruction. When you say they, they did X, Y, Z, you better show me. Because I don't sever shit and I don't accuse people of shit without tangible, credible evidence. And it isn't there. It is not there. And I, the, I have seen close personal friends, associates, comrades acting like absolute fucking faggots lately over this shit, doing dividing lines, doing the exact shit that Marvel, DC, Disney and every other big entertainment industry does. Oh, you don't, you don't toe the line. You're not in, you're not good. You, we don't want you. Sorry. I don't bow to pressure. I don't bow to fucking cuckery. And I certainly will not accept 
insufficient evidence and then inferences beyond that to support conclusions that are not actually linked. I never have. I never will. My entire time on YouTube and Rumble and Locals and wherever is based on my personal credibility. And what that means to each person is different. But to me, I'm not going to condemn a person in the absence of evidence. I'm not going to condemn a person if it requires a logical leap for me to say they've never done this thing before, but now they are because of this when there's no hard connection. And it's been a frustrating couple fucking weeks because I don't want any fight, by the way. All of these fights are fucking gay and everybody involved is irritating me to the max. Everybody is irritating me to the max. It's not my thing. It's not my fight. But if you ask me, if you ask me my opinion, if you ask me to chime in, I'll tell you. And I say, looks like someone mocked a thing that you thought was unmockable. To me, that's not a crime. Mock everything. Tell every joke. Criticize everything. Especially me and my stuff, of course. But that's not life ruination. That's not attacking a business. That's not impermissible. No one is above criticism, commentary, or critique. If you ask me to condemn someone for doing that, I will not. Now, I know people are going to say, Ah, oh, Nick, you're leaving out this thing. You know, that, that thing with contacting a charity and contacting a company. I haven't seen evidence to support that the people in question did that. I've seen a lot of inferences. I've seen a lot of assumptions. I've seen a lot of people tell me, obviously they did. Uh, I'm sorry, obviously doesn't work for me. It never has. And I'm not going to change it now. I will not take a side or kiss a ring. I want Eric to make infinity dollars. I want him to, I want him to create a universe that everybody loves. I want Eric to show the world what independent creation is beyond a level that anyone else has done. And I don't care if he becomes Elon Musk. Great. He's a good dude. I think he's fantastic. But I've seen circling of the wagons. I've seen uh, condemnation. I've seen a request for people to jump on the wagon. I've heard rumblings of lists that certain people are on for not being positive enough. I've heard rumblings that I might be on that list. Have you guys ever gotten the impression that I've done anything other than support the success of ISOM? I dare you to fucking find it. But all I can say is right now, behind the scenes, faggotry abounds. Shit is ugly, nasty, and it looks like every criticism of every big company you've ever heard happening within the group that was supposed to buck that. And I won't stand for it. I won't bow to it. And as I said before, if you ask me to take a side, then you can fuck off. If you ask me to do a thing, to disavow either person involved, you better show me why, and no one has, on either side, shown me anything worthy of condemning anyone. And yet, it's all fucking over, Twitter and everything else. Not doing it. Not doing it. And fuck anyone who asked me to. I am. Uh, Mimi says rackets to Switzerland. No, I'm not Switzerland. Not at all. That is not neutral in the face of evidence. Uh, I, I am not that. I'm neutral in the face of non-evidence. But more importantly, I'm, I'm not neutral. I'm actually for both sides of this argument. I am never for immunity from criticism. 
And what I've seen in this, and I've, I've spoken my mind behind the scenes on this, by the way. Uh, what I've seen in this is this is probably the biggest shit test that has been faced by the independent creator community that I know. And they failed fucking miserably. Because all you had to do was say, lol, okay, and move on. And no one could fucking countenance the idea that you could say, lol, okay, and move on. Not a single person. You had to circle the wagons. You had to protect. Do not entertain criticism. And it escalated after that. Could have been ignored like everything else. But it wasn't. So, again, I'll say it this way. Without ambiguity, I hope Eric July makes trillions of dollars. I hope his Ripiverse blows the independent creator community into the stratosphere. I want him to bury companies like Image, Bone, IDW, whatever, any other, con like uh, eventually Marvel and DC. I want him to be a rival to everything that they do. But I never want him his company, his universe, or his creations to be above criticism or commentary because the people who currently hold the title say they're above criticism or commentary because if you criticize them, you're a racist. And by the way, if you haven't seen that, oh, you just hate a black man succeeding. It is the same SJW faggot talking points. Not from Eric. To be very clear, not from Eric. But you will see that everywhere. Oh, you just hate black men succeeding. You just hate race. You just hate race. You just hate race. I will never sign on to that shit. It is the same bullshit that Marvel and DC do all the time. And I'm not fucking here for it. I don't give a shit about comics generally. So I'm certainly not going to sacrifice the way I treat people or questions or problems on the altar of fucking kids books sold to a grown men. I'm not going to do that. Comics are a thing. You like them? Great. I loved Spawn comics. I have a bunch of them. I don't collect comics anymore. I don't dislike them. Not my thing. But I'm not going to do it for a medium. And I'm not going to do it for any person. I will not compromise my principles. I will not compromise my approach. I've been on the internet long enough. And I've been burned by enough people to know there is basically fucking no one to sacrifice your credibility for a cause or a person. You stick by what you know and you stick by what you do. And typically the people who align with you will out. And the people who don't will also out. And you'll usually be surprised by who that is. So, that's my statement on the fucking comic situation. And every day I wake up and see Twitter, I see the gayest bullshit ever. Right now, what you can find on Twitter in regards to this, you can find. You can find people on the right in favor of free speech saying, well, that joke's too far. That thing is too far. That statement is too much. You can joke about everything except this. You can do everything except this. They're taking obvious, obvious troll jokes and applying them to people as if they're not, as if they're serious statements. Serious statements that no one would say, even if they meant it. And it's fucking ridiculous. And it's absurd. Their biases, their predilections, and their petty grab hand circle jerkery are influencing their decisions. And it is the most frustrating goddamn thing on the planet because I have known these people for a long time and their entire business model is based on not that. And to see it happen, is really disappointing. I'm not here to call people out by name. I'm not here to call out individuals. I'm here to say, I don't like what I see. I see a big recipe for failure. I see the same 
shit that is criticized about these big companies happening in real time in the smallest, most insignificant of independent projects. Sure, it's a big independent project, but it's tiny in comparison to these big companies that we're supposed to be paralleling or rivaling. And I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. And so to everybody involved, uh, one last message. If you ever want me on a side or pledging allegiance or kissing a ring or doing a thing, you already know I never will. And I don't care if people stop watching, stop associating, stop inviting, whatever it is. I won't do it. I haven't. I haven't done that for fucking almost six years now. I'm not about to start. Not for this, not for anything. Uh, Nick, I hate drama, always involved in some drama. Yes, literally, yes. But that's the reality of it, isn't it? I hate drama, so I just try to be friends with pretty much everyone I run into. Well, your friends don't do that. Your friends don't. So they will have drama with each other. They, that will happen. This is going to be one of the videos. One of the videos on my YouTube creator series. You have to be prepared for this and you have to know how you will respond. This is how I'll respond. By the way, is this the most advantageous way to respond? No, it's specifically bad. It is bad for money. The easy way is to pick the obviously bigger side and be sympathetic. You want to rake in super chats. You want to rake in support. You want to get new viewers. You pick the side that has the bigger audience base and you say, yeah, you cast the other one aside. You throw them away like garbage. You pick the big one. You pick the money. You pick the views. It's easy. You can navigate every dilemma, every drama dilemma you want by saying, who's bigger? Who's got more views? Which, which views? Correction. Who's got more views that also align with mine? When both parties have views that align with yours, you pick the one that's bigger, that aligns with yours. And guess what? Make a shitload of money, especially when they have a demonstrated ability for their audience to pay. It'd be very easy to just take Eric's side in this. It'd be very fucking easy to take Eric's side in this. Because you know what? Not only is his audience considerably larger than Dick's and has a reputation for paying for stuff like $6 million to Eric July. $6 million between ISOM and 1 and 2. Very easy to take his side. And the best part is, if I took his side, you know who wouldn't give a shit? Dick. Dick would never care. He would still come on my show. He'd still be my friend. He would actually tell me to take Eric's side for my own benefit because he wouldn't give a fuck. Really easy to do. Really simple. Easy choice. Creators, you have to choose what you do. You have to choose how you act and you have to choose consistency in what that is. I won't ever do it. Do it then, kiss Eric's ring, Nick. No. No, I won't. I love him. I hung out with him down in Dallas. Like uh, a several, uh, like six hours, I think. We're at a barbecue place hanging out. It was me, him, Brian, the editor, Brittany Venti, some other people. A great conversation. Fantastic time. Uh, having some barbecue, having some drinks. I love him. I, I, I want nothing but success. Other people, Eric has never asked me, by the way, to be very clear. Eric has never asked me to kiss the ring. He's never said anything but nice words to me. Other people have. Other people have tried to get me to do the thing. And I will not do it. I want ISOM two, three, four, and B. I want all of them to make millions of dollars. Absolutely. But I'll never say that anything, anyone, any property, any concept, medium, whatever, is above scrutiny and criticism. And laughing and criticizing is not destroying a person's business. Now, I know what people are saying by destroy a person's business, and I haven't seen, I have not seen evidence to support it. And until I do, I'm not on the bandwagon. Sorry, this, I, I, 
I don't want to talk about this stuff. I know you're like, uh, Nick, why are you talking about this? Look, no, 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 no. This specific subject is every day for me right now. It's, it's not only every day, it's every interaction. It's every post, it's everything someone posts, whatever. Private messages, someone brings it up. When I say I don't want to talk about it, I don't want it to exist. I don't want that thing. I just want to go on a live stream, have fun, tell jokes, make people positive, promote stuff, laugh. Enjoy life. That's what I want to do. But when it's here, when it's here, when the drama exists, it's every day, every encounter, every interaction. When the audiences are big enough, that's how it goes. It is draining and trying, and I fucking hate it. Because I don't want Eric to make all the money in the world. But I also don't think he's above criticism, and I don't think Isom is above critique. And the problem is not where we are now. But the problem is going back in history to where it started. And it started with a critique of ISOM. It started with someone saying, yeah, probably not any good because no one's talking about the story. It started on this channel, of course, because fuck my life, right? It started here. But someone said, yeah, no one's talking about the story, so it's probably not any good. And then it evolved into a critique and then it evolved into everything else. And then mudslinging and bullshittery and circling wagons. And I hate that. I think all of us uh, are on the same basic fucking side. I can't imagine why we're fighting with ourselves when the bigger enemies are out there constantly. So yeah, I don't want to talk about the drama. I don't want, I don't, I don't want the drama to exist because of that. But here we are. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.